Welcome to Broken Tusk Rising, a Pathfinder 2nd Edition actual play in the Galarian campaign setting. We're playing through the quest for the Frozen Flame adventure path. I'm Sean, and I'm playing Andreas Witchborn, the human magus. I'm Jessica, and I'm playing Zancath, the halfling fighter. I'm Jeanette, and I'm playing Jonesy, the human cleric. This is Josh, and I'm playing Corgo, the human barbarian. Last time on Broken Tusk Rising, Andreas, Jonesy, Corgo, Zankath, and Rangara pursued two frog-like creatures into an underground lake, where they were confronted by a woman apparently made of water. She accused them of being not very nice, and therefore unworthy of help, though she did warn them to watch out for the Morlock. She also mentioned that if they give a cap back to the Blindheims, they might undo some of the damage they had done. After a rest to recover from injuries, the party pushed deeper into the cave system, and mostly evaded, mostly, a series of traps, before stumbling into an ambush by the aforementioned Morlock, which was wrapped in the gruesome remains of a Blindheim it had killed. Five on one odds were too much for it though, and they defeated the creature. They've recovered a magical cap, which has been unanimously declared cute. <laughs> There's also a passage to the east that they have not yet explored, their goal is to find the spirit of Thiarstic, the saber-toothed tiger. But so far, there is no sign of such a creature, aside from some ancient claw marks in a large rock in the underground lake. Before we get started, a rules correction. We put the ghost touch rune and the potency rune from the plus one spear on Zankath's bow. But unfortunately, ghost touch runes can only be placed on melee weapons. As a result, we are putting the runes on Andreas's meteor hammer. I'm sorry, Zankath. I still think you should name your bow. <laughs> oh, I was supposed to have done that, wasn't I? Huh. <laughs> now, back to the caves. What would you like to do? Is there any cool secret tunnels in here? Well, I'd like to remind you to do something since you have finished this combat that we finished last time. There's something important that you're supposed to do at the end of a fight. Write my mother a letter. This is a tabletop role-playing game. Loot everything? Loot, loot the body? Loot the body! Yes! <laughs> you're supposed to loot the body. Is anybody else hearing that voice? <laughs> <laughs> I'll write a letter to my mother about it, like I do after every fight. Okay, so on this body you find a warhammer. Pretty nice warhammer. It's in pretty good shape. Seems strangely nice for a creature like this. There's also some chalk and a snare kit that must have been used to make some of these traps. Sure, that makes sense. A snare kit contains tools and materials for creating snares. A snare kit allows you to craft snares using the crafting skill. A specialist snare kit gives you a plus one item bonus to the check. I would like... Oh, it's, is it a specialist snare kit or is it a snare kit? Yep, it's a snare kit, parentheses, specialist. Ah, okay, perfect. I will cast Read Aura on the hammer and the chalk. Okay. The chalk has no aura. Dang. Blame. Sure. But the Warhammer does. Woo! Bing, 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 bing. Um, it is a plus one Warhammer. I mean, I'm just going to straight up tell you, you, you've seen plus one weapons. You've been around this stuff before. Uh, let's not beat around the bush. It's a plus one Warhammer. Does anybody have a runestone on them? A blank runestone? <laughs> no. Uh, unfortunately, I do not. But I'll, I'll take that chalk. Oh, yes, here you go. Does anybody want this uh, this magical hammer? Not quite my style. Fair. Jonesy will trace the body outline with the piece of chalk. <laughs> 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 okay. In, in case we have to move him so we know where to put him back. <laughs> yeah, a guy in a trench coat comes in and says, Nobody touch anything. <laughs> Nobody leave town. Nobody leave town. <laughs> All right, well, I will carry the plus one warhammer for safety's sake in that case. All right. Um, and then the specialist snare kit, none of us can use. Mm. So that's just how it goes, I guess. We'll sell it to Fran. Doesn't Zancath have... Some snare 
stuff. Some of you have the ability to make some snares that you learned when you were working with Whippa. I failed all of that stuff. I did not do well on those rolls. Yeah, I did. I did succeed on that stuff, but yeah. um, man, snares just aren't very good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, they're not very it takes good. so long to set up. Yeah, yeah. This game is not really designed around ambushing people who have given you plenty of time to prepare, is it? Well, you know, one day. Well, anything else you want to do? Then you've got your cap, little candle cap. I'm gonna pass a oil of potency potion to Zankath. Ah, because now I don't need it. Okay. Also, Corgo and Zankath are wounded. Corgo pretty badly. Not wounded as in they have the wounded condition. Wounded is in. They're both down some hit points. He's fine. Let's go. Jonesy will take a look. Corco looks terrible. His eyes are bloodshot. His face is all bruised up. He's got a ring around his neck. I'll find you guys. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> Jonesy, what are you doing? So he starts choking I, I you. Forgot, I, still, I, choking I, I forgot I had the chalk in my hand. Oh, jeez. So Jonesy attempts a medicine check and rolls... <laughs> A one. Damage. I rolled a nine, which is a critical fail. So I think that means that Corco takes damage. Uh, yes, it's uh, 1d8 points damage. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm so, <laughs> so sorry. Is this going to... Is Could this knock you out? 1d8 can't, um, no. I don't know. Okay, I, was, I, don't, I don't know where he's okay, at. Okay, one. Oh, good. However, that makes Corco immune to being uh, medicined for the next hour. Okay. Um, <laughs> Jonesy, why did you do that? I yeah, he was trying to like <laughs> look at some of his wounds and close them up, and he accidentally got left some chalk, some, left some, some chalk in got there, got some chalk <laughs> dust, some chalk, some dirt. It'll be fine. And, yeah, it kind of hurt. It burns. But now he's all like frazzled because everybody was like, "What are you doing?" So he can't can't like, figure out what he's supposed to do. It's uh-huh. <laughs> like the episode of Seinfeld with the milk duds. Yes. Except we just need, like, the observation room. Yeah. Just watch Seinfeld more, Corgo's Josh. Used to this. I saw that look. Corgo's used to this type of medicine. He feels like it worked. <laughs> He's like, oh, I'm all better, you guys. Let's go. Come on. I think that we should give this cat back to the water lady. Uh, didn't she want us to take it back to the uh, the others? Yeah, but she's the one that can talk to us, so I want to, I want to make sure that she knows that we're doing the right thing. Sure. I mean, we'll have to pass by her her lake on the way back to them either way. True. I I think that's a good idea. Any way to waste an hour without combat. (laughs) There's there's also another chamber that we did not explore. Yes, but what if that's the place that this... (laughs) Oh, yes, that's... Right. Just pointing it out. That could be bad. With uh, Corgo in his current condition. Yes, I'm fine, Jonesy. Patch me up good. Yes, you look so much better... (laughs) <laughs> you really don't. You really still look terrible. The complexion is... What? Why are you talking about me like that? I'm right here. <laughs> You're going to be fine. <laughs> he looks at Jonesy, shakes his head. No, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we will head back to the main chamber with the lake in it. Colgo should go in the middle, yes. Okay. So you walk into the large lake chamber with this underground lake, and you look around, there's no one here. Uh, Andreas will pick up a rock, kind of like bounce it in his hand, think about throwing it in the water. No, no, no. I wasn't going to do it. Why don't Why don't you just pull the hat out? I'm, I don't have the hat. Oh, who has that? The cap. Oh, we left it in the room. We gotta come back. <laughs> <laughs> so you all go back, get the That's cap. It's gotta be like ten minutes already, right? <laughs> <laughs> all right, you go back, you get the cap, you bring it back in here. There's still no one in here. Jonesy, who grabbed the cap, will place the cap on the shore's edge and then take a step back. Okay. In hopes that something will happen. All right. It's very quiet in here. You can hear the water gently lapping against the shore. Nothing happens. Maybe, maybe like, call out for her or something, Jonesy. What was her name? I think it was Agatha. But we knew it. <laughs> we probably knew it. The, the the story that we heard from... Ooh, this was so long ago. What was Grandpa's name? Ewa. Grandpa Ewa, yes. No, the the story that we heard from uh, Grandpa Ewa said that 
uh, Sierstic, I believe is how it was pronounced. I'm not certain about that. Was the Guardian. Oh, yes. that was the Guardian. That was Tiger. Never mind then. Please disregard all. Never mind, I've just recalled that that was the Tiger. <laughs> this is Sierstic. I'm not sure. Are you out there? That was still some good note taking. Thank you. You're a point. <laughs> You're a point. <laughs> <laughs> You get one mangled hero point. <laughs> yeah, that's not right. <laughs> What's wrong with your hero point? <laughs> and this will throw the rock into the water. Okay. After you call out, you wait a moment, and you're about to throw the rock into the water, and... <laughs> Just bang her in the head. <laughs> this woman reemerges. <laughs> He, he just is about to throw it and like <laughs> he manages to let go of it at the right time and like clatters to the ground and he jumps oh it's, it's you she reappears sticks her head up out of the water just her eyes she's just watching you uh, Jonesy found this hat yes her eyes brighten up and she says oh oh that's that's great please please wait here and take a few steps back okay Andreas Hustles back from the edge of the water. <laughs> yeah, well, 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 she well. disappears under the water again, and a few moments later, that Lionheim that kept slapping the top of its head steps out of the water and excitedly hops up and down and croaks at you, and picks up the cap and puts it on top of his head, and then shakes its head back and forth, and suddenly the candle springs to light. It just lights up, and it hops up and down. And then it goes running off down the shore and up the passage to the northwest. That, that was pretty cute. And mm-hmm. the woman reappeared. You did a good thing. Uh, th- yes, thank you. We uh, didn't know that... Uh, wait, you never, he never had... Oh, somebody, somebody stole the cap from him. Is that what happened? Yes, the, the Morlock... The Morlock enjoyed tormenting them... The Morlock would capture them and choke them and then release them just to have the chance to torment them again. Oh, how terrible. Of course, sometimes he would kill them too. And he took their cap because that was what their leader wore. And he used that as a way to lure them to come in search of it. Oh, very terrible. I, we would never do that. We, uh... No, no, certainly not. Uh, and returns. unfortunately, the, the Morlock will no longer cause them any problems. We have taken care oh, of that. you killed the Morlock. That's wonderful. Yes, sometimes killing is a justified action. Well, now they can go back to some other place because I don't think they'll want to stay here. And as she says that, you see this horde of Blindheims, <laughs> six of them, and one of them, that leader with the cap on, all come running out of that hallway and they dive into the water and they swim off and you can see the lights from their eyes gradually receding out into the water. Where do you think they'll go? I don't know. There's an underground passage. That's how I got here. An underwater passage. They'll probably follow that to a river. That's curious. Where does it lead? Where Where did you come from before you were here? What, what, what is your name? My name is Gothganara. I am a naiad. You probably figured that out. This is my lake now, although I I was swimming in other lakes before, and I've lived in rivers. Some of the passages here in this cave system go deeper into the Darklands, which is a dangerous place, and I can't imagine you'd want to go there. I also know there's a room with pretty paintings on the walls, but I haven't gone beyond that. Is that further to the east? Yes, to the east, that's right. Really, I don't know what else is in here. I, I mostly stick to my lake. And have you ever encountered the spirit of these caves, Siastic, a uh, great tiger? No, I don't. I don't know if it if it's here. It's f- deeper into the cave, and I, I don't know about it. But why are you here? This is where I live. It's very peaceful when there aren't Morlocks and Blindheims all over. Have you been here very long? Oh, a few years, I think. It's hard to be sure when you're underground. Uh, Understandable. But don't you get lonely all by yourself? Oh, no, I like it here. Well, I guess if there's nothing else I can do, I'll I'll let you go. You, you, maybe you can help our friend Corgo. He was quite hurt in battling the Morlock. You can see his throat's all marked up. Are you able to help in any way? I don't think she can. Let me see. Doesn't hurt to ask. 
I'm, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Corgo's drooping against the wall and sliding down. Some say that the kiss of an ayat on the cheek of a humble warrior is enough to heal even future wounds. No, that would be bad. That would be bad. That's not <laughs> happening. I'm just joshing. <laughs> I know you're an honorable man, Gorgo. Mm-hmm. You just want to see me dead. <laughs> uh, no. She says, I'm sorry. I, I don't have any healing power for other people. I heal myself when I'm in the water, but I can't heal others. Does there, um, any, uh, cool stuff in your lake that maybe would help us on our adventure? No. <laughs> fair, fair. <laughs> I had to check. She sounds very bored. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm gonna be going. Us too. We're gonna go over here now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just walking away. Goodbye, good luck. Good luck to Oh, she left. <laughs> <laughs> she disappears under the water. Well, I feel like we probably could have used that hat for something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was the same thing. <laughs> Do we check to see if the hat had any magical abilities? Yes. I mean, it did. It, it lights did. up. You saw it do that. When the, the Blindheim put oh. it on her head, she shook her head, and it lit up. So why do we do good things for other people? Honestly, I was expecting something out of that and more than just, you know, good feelings, but here we are. I mean, I feel good about it, yeah. That's true. <laughs> okay. Well, that, that's all I wanted. Well, Jonesy's happy, then I'm happy. Yes. I, I wanted stuff, but okay. Although I, I think she didn't like us, no. which was, makes me a little bit sad, so, so maybe it wasn't worth it. We did murder a bunch of her um, friends, so. No, she said she didn't want them around. The blind time? Yes. Oh, I was a bit. I went. I missed that sentence. I'm pretty sure she said that. <laughs> she was upset she, when we she killed liked them first. it when it was quieter without the blind times. Oh right. Happier when they're gone. Maybe she wanted to do it herself. <laughs> Coco, how are you feeling? Great. Coco looks awesome. He looks terrible. <laughs> it's, it's been let's say thirty minutes. Never better. Successfully avoid a kiss. <laughs> We're good. I think we should probably take a, a bit of a breather here. So that Jonesy can actually help you, because you, you, you honestly you look like you're going to be useless through this next room. Jonesy just helped me. I'm great. Yes, but it's uh, it's lunchtime. Uh, everybody have it some lunch. It is actually uh, early afternoon. <laughs> it would be a reasonable time to have a uh, snack. Oh, when you put it that way, yeah, sure. <laughs> Jonesy busts out the camping meals. Boil some water. All right. I want the pizza legible. <laughs> <laughs> but there's only one, and you got it last time. You got it last time, Corgo. No. You know, you just share. Darn, darn, I don't like the sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you sit down to a Lunchable and whatever others, other uh, supplies you have available. So much trash in these things. <laughs> I feel so wasteful. <laughs> Pretty sure I could have bought salami for way less than this if I got it separately. <laughs> Wait a minute! I think another group was in here eating lunchables. <laughs> that doesn't bode well at all. <laughs> so you got mummified. <laughs> He's got a Capri Sun pouch. In his <laughs> <laughs> While everybody is enjoying their Lunchable, I forgot that I have this crying angel pendant, which mm-hmm. will let me, well, not let me, but it basically turns any critical failure and what Ooh. I'm trying to heal, makes it a normal heal instead. So at least this way oh, cool. I will not I, 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 uh, oh. double damage him. What? I was going to say it's single use and you only did one point of damage to him. I know, but what if it happens again? Like it's gone. Like then take we it. laugh and point. <laughs> it's gone. You got, you get one use. Joins the yeah, corpses. I'm using it right now. Okay. I've had it since like yeah, the that's... second game. Okay. I keep forgetting about it. I'm just gonna use it. No, no. It's good to use it. Twenty three. Nice. Nice. Okay, so you're using your pendant to turn that failure into a regular success. No, I thought. Oh wait, you can. I thought you can only use it before. No, no, no. Use it. Use it at the time that you would critically fail, like you you rolled a critical fail, and it just changes it into a regular failure, so you don't end up doing damage. That's so much better. Okay, I thought I had to use it yeah, before in case I roll a critical oh, okay. failure. So can I take it back? 
Yeah, I mean, you didn't understand what it was. and did I'd not. Take it back. That's fine. Okay. Thanks. But after the hour elapses and you try treating Corgo again, this time you rolled a 23. Yes. Okay. So 2d8, 10. 10. Nice. 10 hit points back for Corgo. Now he looks reasonably healthy. You're going to live forever. He smiles and only one tooth is missing. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, teeth, he made teeth grow back? That's yeah. impressive. I'll just go in there and color one of those teeth black. <laughs> just broke out the chalk and put it in the holes. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Yep. Chalk teeth. Oh. <laughs> I don't like it. What's the stop like a group from just like healing up fully all the time? Just like time pressure. Just time. Just time pressure? Okay. So what do you want to do now? Are you going to return to your marching order and march to the cave, or are you doing something else? We definitely should check those stairs up to the east room uh-huh. for more traps. Yes. Because that Morlock was trap happy. Trapped everything. I guess if you're actively searching, you know, I, I, I think it still makes more sense for me to roll them. So here we go with some secret perception checks. And who's who's doing the, the, the searching? I, I, actually, I guess, Zankath, are you doing the scouting still? Sure. Okay, so Corgo and Jonesy, you're searching, right? You're you're looking for traps. Yes. Hey, Andreas, are you gonna use the magic hammer or just hold like hold on to it? It's mine. You didn't claim it earlier. <laughs> oh, I mean, oh, yeah. No, I'll give it to you. <laughs> well, you're just so good with the other thing. I mean, I don't. Well, yes, I'm a hammer collector. Is what they call me now. I don't even know how that works. So, Jonesy. You spot yet another tripwire in a similar place to the others. It is a trap on the stairs. A horse? Yes, careful, there's a horse. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hail of razor stones. Oh, Ooh. sure. Okay, let's see if I can actually manage to disarm something. All right, thievery check. 19. You did it. Yay. Zankath carefully clips the tripwire, and none of the stones come tumbling down and the passage to the east is now open well it was already open but now it's safe to enter you walk up some moist steps into a large chamber Ooh, moist steps. <laughs> you don't like the moist steps <laughs> they're very moist what is wrong with these steps? <laughs> they're moist a little slippery a little shiny sounds soft no they're they're they're, they're quite firm they're rock <laughs> this winding cave's walls have been painted with three floor-to-ceiling iconographic illustrations. One of a mastodon, one of a dinosaur, and farther into the room, one of a great cat. Humanoid figures wielding spears and axes swarm the mastodon and great cat. Near the dinosaur, more hunters emerge from the fingertips of a handprint smeared on the wall. Above the animals, a series of dots are reminiscent of stars. The chamber wraps around the stone outcropping by the stairs and continues to the south. Everybody stop. Last time I saw a cave painting, I nearly died. Uh, Andreas will cast Read Aura. It's got a range of 30 feet. And I'll kind of like focus on different parts of the cave painting to see if any of them are magical as I work my way across. Okay, as you move around... Yes. As I stand at the far end of the right. room. <laughs> but getting just close enough to determine if maybe when you move into range, one of them might be magical. Yes. The Well, actually, you know what? Let's see. Does it actually count? Does it have a... Eh, it doesn't say, but I'm going to go ahead and rule it anyway. The painting of a cat appears to be yet another one of those haunts like you triggered before. I knew it. The other two, however... As you're looking around, Andreas specifically, as you're looking around using your read aura, trying to detect magic, you realize that there's something about these other paintings. There's something important about them. Corgo, they also seem important to you. You're trained in nature. There seems to be something important about them, but Corgo, you can't cast any spells, so you, you don't know any more than that there's something important. Andreas, however, is trained in both arcana and occultism. Oh, yeah. And he looks at the humanoid figures in the painting and gradually realizes that these are not merely a depiction of everyday life or important events. Something more significant is going on here. There's something to be learned from co- from closely studying these paintings. But first, you will fire a ray of frost at the cat uh, painting and okay. destroy it. right. So, roll a nature or religion check. Oh, jeez. 
I'll go for a religion. Okay. I'm going to hero point that. Oh, that's a 13. It's, it's better. Well, you are not able to disable it, but, you know, you didn't screw anything up. Can anybody else try? Or is it just... Sure. Yeah, okay. you're welcome to try. Jonesy will give it a shot after Andres explains to him what he's supposed to try to do. For a 15. You are also unable to disable that particular painting. Someone could try a nature check or a religion check. I I got this. Oh, boy. <laughs> I've done this before. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Natural 20. <laughs> Corgo picks up a big rock <laughs> and just throws it at the wall, <laughs> and it smashes the whole, the wall. The painting falls oh, off the wall. Oh, nature. See, nature. rocks, yes. they fix everything. <laughs> <laughs> nature solves everything. The other two paintings... Andreas, are you going to check those out? Yeah, now I'll step up and give them a closer scrutinization. All right, so you stare at them for a while. You walk back and forth between them. The rest of you are waiting while Andreas looks at these paintings, mumbling to himself. There's something important about them. They're not just paintings. And gradually, Andreas, you come to realize that these are spells. Oh, yes. And if you study these for a while... You will learn, anyone who casts spells can learn these two new spells. That's cool. I'm so excited. Me too. They are called, and they're special for this adventure path, they're called Pack Attack and Painted Scouts. Cool. Sounds cool. So as long as you have some magical abilities, or do you need, like, specifically the ability to have spell books? All it says in the AP is, if you study these, you can learn these spells, assuming you're a spellcaster. So Pack Attack is a occult and primal spell. So I can learn this as part of my witch tradition, but to Jonesy, you're divine yep. uh, caster, so you'll be able to learn that. And then the other one, sorry, what was it called? Painted Scout is also occult and primal. Okay, so these are for me. <laughs> that being said... Mike did say it's for anybody. Yo, I'm assuming you can cast... I will be able to cast uh, third level occult spells... Uh, near the end of the adventure. Yeah, Painted Scout is third level, Pack Attack is second level. I'll add them to my spell book, but I won't be able to use them for years. You want me to explain what these do? Oh, yeah, certainly. do it. All right, so Pack Attack, you and one other target gain an uncanny coordination that helps you take down foes. You and the other target flank any enemy to which you are both adjacent. You don't have to be on opposite sides of the enemy's space. You just have to be adjacent, and you are flanking them. What's the duration on that bad boy? Up to one minute. Ooh. It has to be sustained. Ooh, that's... So short. And then painted scout, you press your hand to stone, causing hand-drawn scouts to spread out from your fingers. As long as you keep your hand on the, on the wall and sustain the spell, you can see, hear, and smell through the painted scout using whatever senses you have. So you can send them out from you, out to a range of 120 feet along stone surfaces to see and hear areas beyond your normal vision That's and sound. Cool. That's cool. Awesome. The flavor's cool, too. Yeah. Nice. Is that the level three one? That's the level three yeah. one. Of course. <laughs> they have whatever senses you have. So if you have dark vision, then they have dark vision. If you have see invisibility, they have see invisibility. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. I won't be able to cast it until probably level nine. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing you got it now. I got a minute on that. But we could use it right now. <laughs> yeah, right. You know what's coming up. Just don't die. <laughs> don't die. All right. And that's what's important in here. Oh, yeah. And... Corgo, that nature check, that was really good. That was a natural 20. I'm going to roll that over. I'm, I'm going to apply that to something else, too. In addition to just disabling that painting, Corgo, after you crush the painting and you watch Andreas pace back and forth, you are waiting patiently for that to happen, and you're looking around, and you realize that these stars that are painted on the, the ceiling of this cavern... They're, they've been placed there very deliberately. They're not just randomly put around. They are marking a specific time of year. Specifically, they are marking springtime, which is now, at solar midnight. The moment exactly between dusk and dawn. Oh, cool. So this painting on the ceiling is trying to communicate some time that must be important for some reason. And you know that these are your ancestors who painted this. These are people from... The Burning Mammoth tribe from long ago before it split 
who painted these stars in the ceiling and these other paintings as well, there's something important about this time, solar midnight during the spring. Corgo is like, he's, he's looking at it and he just, ha- he has like a memory of him as a kid. He's out, he can't sleep. So he's outside his tent. You know, his mom comes out and kind of puts a, sh- a hand over his shoulder and they're looking up at the, at the stars. And then he snaps back out of it, and he's like, "Hey, I think these are uh, this is like late at night, midnight, maybe in the springtime, which happens to be the time is now, same season, right? Yeah, I think it's important for some reason. I don't know why, but they painted a specific time. Wonderful and strange things happen at night. Just a couple days ago, we saw the aurora, one of the most beautiful things that I'd ever seen." Perhaps that's what it's indicating. Perhaps there's something even more strange that's meant to happen in this cave at that time. Yeah, let's let's come back here during that time. Yeah. I agree. Is there a, a hole in the cave no, here at all? No, there's Mike? not. There's there's no hole in the ceiling here. Hmm. Yeah, and there's not like it's not like the there's not a direct line of sight out of the cave no. either, so it's not like there's no there's no sunlight or moonlight or anything that's gonna be able to come into this room. Hmm. Interesting. No problem. Jonesy just counts the minutes all the time, so he always knows what time it is. <laughs> Very helpful. <laughs> There's actually a cantrip <laughs> that, like, is like, it is the time, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> what a lame cantrip. It would help you here. Does it just for time zones and all that kind of stuff? How does that work? Of course, <laughs> Mike. It's magic. It's what magic. What space? <laughs> what does it tell you? It tells you the space time. Space time. time. <laughs> 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 you can also set it to have your like home time too. Wow! So you know exactly what time is back here. I mean, if you travel between a couple cities, then you'll know you know each of the cities, so you can keep track of when you call. Plane time. Yeah. Cantrip yeah. is smart. Yeah, you gotta <laughs> adjust your cantrip. Like if you're on a secret mission, you gotta be like, all right, synchronized guys, cantrips. Synchronized <laughs> cantrips. There is a spell for synchronizing each other's time oh, together. No, stop it! Stop, stop. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Uh, this, this game isn't for nerds at all. Yeah, Lizo has gone too far. <laughs> they must be stopped. <laughs> uh, looking around, does this? Because uh, I feel, I feel like I just have this feeling that this has got something to do with CR stick. Does the does the painting of the cat relate at all to the star engravings or star paintings? Like, is there a relationship you, there? I don't think so, no. Okay. No, you don't think it does. At least, Cor- I should say, Corgo doesn't think it does. All right. Nah, but, yeah, maybe the boss of the cave is, is nullified at that time, so that's when we go in there. You can only beat him at solar midnight. I don't know. I, I just know it's important. It's like Chrono Trigger. Love that game. That's pretty cool. I, I just was thinking, uh, I was just realizing that uh, Bastion is my witch spell book. Ah. So it's actually Bastion who's, like, investigating these spells and, like, maybe he's, like, taking, like, little chips of paint and eating them and, like, absorbing the pe- the power of these spells. That's so messed up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait, is Bastion, he's a hedgehog? Oh, he's a porky pet. Yeah, he's a porky pet. So he's nocturnal. So once he's awake, well, no, it's nighttime. Oh. <laughs> there you go. So Perfect. That's a trick. Fortunately, it, it was lead paint. Uh, so, <gasps> oh, <no. laughs> how dare you? How dare you? This cute little porcupine. He's gonna grow up to be a very aggressive, uninhibited porcupine. <laughs> That's how I want. Gotta get to the seventies. The painting was made in the seventies. <laughs> <laughs> There's asbestos in this cave. <laughs> I'm just curious how your how your magic. Do we see you like every morning, like talking to the the porky pet? Like, is that how you prepare magic? Uh, that's how I pre- prepare my witch spells. Yeah, and then my and then I got to spend more time preparing my mage spells, which is from my spell book. Okay, are you, are you like whispering to the little? I mean, not that that would be weird in this setting or in this tribe at all, talking to an animal. But like, yeah. you do does does Andreas have to like you know sit there and like. He puts part of Bastion's head in his mouth <laughs> and just kind of like holds him there. <laughs> and then I just, then I, then I just like make this vacuuming noise. Yeah. 
<laughs> and we're all totally cool with it. <laughs> I gotta go. Uh, I, gotta, I gotta go suck the spells out of my porky pet. <laughs> Give me a few moments. That's why Jonesy wears earplugs to bed. <laughs> Because <laughs> in the morning, he doesn't want to listen to the vacuum sound. <laughs> okay, but, but actually, actually, in canon, uh, it's just like a it's like a, a silent communing. So, like as Andreas is doing his like he always does his like incense rituals that connect him to 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 Desna. He is doing those same sort of rituals, and and he's uh, a night witch. Or, uh, his patron is the night. And so he actually does all this yeah, quite late at night, keeping Jonesy up most of the time. Gotcha. That's a lot more cool, but a lot less funny than the first <laughs> thing we had. You're right. It was the first thing. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. All right. So what do you want to do now? Uh, it looks like there's a couple ways out of this room. Yep. There's the way you came. And then there's a passage to the south. Okay. That north. That's just Is a little... It? It's just a little, a little notch okay. in the, in the cave. That's what I thought, but I couldn't see the edges for sure. Yep. There's no more lock hiding in there. There's nothing interesting about it. Then we shall continue to the south. All right. Same marching orders and Kath in front. Cool. All right. So you turn that corner. You can see there are some stairs. Oh, traps. Traps. Yeah, traps. We're, 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 checking, traps. we're checking traps. Sure. Sure. Hang on. Who knows what that crazy Morlock has done. Sure. All right. Let's watch out for moist steps. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you look pretty carefully. As far as you can tell, there are no signs of traps here. Everything looks safe. Sure, it's fine. These steps lead upward. So you enter the next chamber. You walk up oh, the Oh, I have an idea. Oh, okay. That boring notch to the north uh-huh. is a secret pathway that only opens at solar midnight. Oh. Yeah. Or maybe we're only supposed to go down this pathway at solar midnight. At solar midnight. Either one could be true. And we're in trouble either way. <laughs> <laughs> you walk up the stairs into the next chamber. The passage wraps around a corner, and you enter a huge room. Paintings of monsters, both legendary and obscure, cover the cavernous walls of this long, broad chamber. Worms, that's with a Y, and wolves engage in an eternal battle alongside owl-headed bears and one-eyed giants. Near the southern wall... A lone, broken-off stalagmite has been fashioned into a pedestal. Old carvings depicting leaping flames and billowing smoke line the stalagmite. Nothing sits on the empty pedestal. A halo of black scorch marks on the pedestal's flat top only enhances its conspicuous bareness. And as you move into the room, you hear a deep rumble coming from all directions. Excellent. (laughs) <laughs> it's probably fine. Excellent. <laughs> it's probably fine. Okay. Time to look back at the notes, everybody. Did Grandfather Iowa tell us about how to do anything with fire? I mean, the flame used to be here, which is what I assume was on the pedestal. Right, it used to be right. on the pedestal. The frozen flame was stolen from here. Oh, bro. Okay, yes. thank you. Here a point. Yeah, so you are correct. This is where the frozen flame was. So, yeah, go ahead and give yourself a hero point. Okay. Excellent. Cool. Thank you. Nice job. So what do you want to do? The room is rumbling, and uh, you're pretty sure the primordial flame used to be on that platform there that, that, that broken off stalagmite. Detect magic, emanation 30 feet, just yes or no, is there magic you here? You don't sense any magic at the moment. A- any idea where the rumbling is coming from specifically, or is it just general? It's sort of reflecting around and hard to identify where it's coming from, and you, the whole place feels a little bit like it's shaking. Oh, Andrea that's... steps to the center of the room. All right. Nope, I'm going to follow. As you do that, there is a loud roar. Roll for initiative. Plus one. No. Do it. <laughs> I don't want your plus one. No, I was knowing initiative. Oh, okay. Oh. I'll take your plus one. <laughs> oh, no. But that's a plus one, so 10. Corgo 18. Ooh. Oh. Whoa, nice, Anka. Yep. Do I get anything in Pathfinder for getting in that 20 on initiative? You, initiative? you get to go you first. Okay. You get to go, usually. Sure. <laughs> Not even guaranteed. At the moment, Zankath, 
there is nothing happening except for you hear a loud roar coming from somewhere maybe to your south and the whole room shakes with this deep roar the paintings around you begin dancing around a little bit like those the paintings have um, owl-headed bears and one-eyed giants fighting and they begin to animate a little bit like they're they're actually moving around uh, is there some kind of knowledge check that I could do to identify the roar I'm just I'm just gonna straight up tell you it reminds you a bit of a louder bigger version of Grungara's roar oh that sounds like a very large cat uh, possibly the spirit. My, my, I, I don't know if we want to attack it or not, but I think it's coming this way. You have the option of ready in action, or you can, of course, delay and act at a different point. I'm going to take my stance. All right. Point like stance. And I am going to move over. I don't want to... I don't trust the paintings. I'm not going to go that near the wall. Mm. And So I'm just going to uh, move to the east a couple steps. That's it? Two actions? Uh, I did. I assume the knowledge check. Oh, well, I didn't have to do no, the knowledge check. you didn't have to do the knowledge check. You have I just t- straight up told you. It sounds like Rungara, but big. Yeah, I don't know that there's a lot I can do with just one, because I used two others. Oil of potency? Yeah. Yeah, I'll apply the oil of potency. To, but I can only apply it to one arrow. Not your bow? I don't, I don't know how this... I, I don't know how this works. Let me... Uh, you apply this to a weapon or suit of armor, it immediately becomes magically potent. If it's a weapon, it becomes a plus one striking weapon for a minute. So I can just but, pour it on my right. bow. Yeah. Cool. Okay, then I add it to my bow. All right. Andreas, it's your turn. <clears throat> you can see Zancath has put his oil of potency on her bow. She's stepped over by the east wall. The rest of your party is still in the entry chamber of this large room. You're close to the middle of the room. What do you want to do? Andreas pulls his broken tusk pendant from around his neck and holds it up in his left hand towards the, the pedestal. He says, Great Siastic, we come on behalf of the broken tusk. Once we were conjoined, a party of adventurers and followers leading the mammoth Following the mammoth, you were an important spirit to them. To us, something has happened. Your flame has been taken, and we come to find it. Reveal yourself. Let us help you. Is there anything else you want to do? you want to take any other actions? I will ready to uh, cast a spell if something appears. Okay. Corgo, it's your turn. What do you want to do? Corgo points to an area near Z- Zanketh and in front of Zanketh and he says go and Hrungar runs over there. We have three actions um, Corgo c- kind of crouches as he enters the room and he takes out a javelin ah. and that's three actions <laughs> Josh did you take that plus one warhammer for me earlier? Um, I did and I couldn't get, uh, figure out how to add to my character sheet so I'll have to uh, let me play with that you now. might want to add that to your character sheet what? you just drag <laughs> you might want to do this. just drag was it a light hammer or a war hammer? War hammer. There you go. So at that moment, after Corgo steps forward, there is another rumble in the cave, and you hear a deep voice say, Revenge! Uh-oh. Corgo, the painting next to you, begins dancing wildly. And then suddenly, emerging from the painting something that looks kind of like this. Oh, oh, dang. Oh, no. It has the loose shape of a cat as this painting seems to jump out at you and take a swipe at you. Why would it do that? That's a very scary blob of paint. Yeah, that was. Paint that looks kind of like a, a cat. In any case, this paint reaches out and succumbs to my ready to action yeah. ah yes so your ready to action kicks in you can cast your spell is it within 10 feet of me uh yeah I'll say it's within 10 feet of you spell strike okay that is a 22 to hit yeah 
with my plus one ghost touch meteor hammer. Now, hold on a moment here. I don't like it when I that's I don't like the next. it when he does that. <laughs> like, why is it that automatic? Yet? What's going All on? All right, so you do hit the We're wall, level two. but it appears to have no effect on this painting because the painting is not actually a creature. The painting attacking is some kind of effect. Oh. Fine. So I'm afraid that your attack just goes through the paint as though it weren't there. It's not that it's like an incorporeal creature. It's like this is some kind of spell or something, mm-hmm. right? It's like you attacked a spell with a weapon or something. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And it's like uh, a ray of fire was shooting at me and I attacked the ray right. as it was flashing right. past. Okay. There's something different going on here. It's not a creature. It's a spell. Something is making the paintings move. Nonetheless, it does make an attack roll on Corgo. Uh, why was I so stupid to stand next to a wall? I feel better about my decision to very specifically not stand right by the wall. 32 oh, hit. Oh, no. What? Oh, Plus 17? What? what is... What? What? That's a probably <laughs> a critical danger. hit. I'm in danger. Should I start working on my second character, my backup character again? <laughs> Josh, is that a critical hit? <laughs> that is definitely a critical All hit. All right, here we go. 32 points of damage. <gasps> 32 to hit, and then 32 points of damage. Here's what happens. This painting comes to life, jumps at Corgo, and Corgo goes down. Cool. Cool. So uh, Corgo uh, falls unconscious, moves an initiative to before the the creature or effect. Which I think he's... Yep. Already before yep. the... Presumably that's where he is already. I was ready to see if I died automatically. That was a ton of damage. And you can see this painting is now dancing and jumping around in a, a more excited manner than it was before, as though it would be ready to do it again. And that's it for somebody's turn. Jonesy, it is your turn. And you see Corgo goes down like a sack of potatoes. Jonesy steps out of the room. No. <laughs> Jonesy <laughs> retreats. <laughs> He runs away. He's going to run over to Corgo and cast Stabilize. Okay. So at least you're stable, and that's literally all I can do. Okay. Zancath, you see Corgo goes down. Jonesy stabilizes him. What do you want to do? Okay, so I saw Andreas shoot this magic beam and it do nothing. That's right. Whatever he did didn't affect this painting. Now, if Uh you wanted to try to make some kind of check or something to figure out the painting, you could do that. Or you could, you know, look around or attack the painting or whatever you'd like to do. Zancat takes a quick look at Corgo and acknowledges there's nothing there that she can do uh, and runs further into the room. Okay, cool. And I I knew there were stairs down there. Do I see anything from where I'm... I I mean, I don't see anything, so I assume. No, I mean, are you doing a seek action? Are you trying to find hidden things? Yes. Okay. Sean's nodding enthusiastically. Yes, I am. Then go ahead and roll that. Okay, perception? Perception. So 15. It's not great. Yeah, you don't see anything. Okay. Uh, I assume that's two actions? That's correct. I'm going to use my third action. Can I look again? Am I going to be penalized? I don't see any reason why you couldn't. Yeah, I'm just going to keep looking. Okay, make another perception check. You're looking extra hard. 19. It's better. You still don't see anything. Okay, that's it. Okay, Andreas. You can see Zancath has run ahead. She's looking around, trying to figure out what's going on. The painting next to Corgo is dancing wildly. What do you want to do? Yes, this is not good. And of course, this room is, the walls are just covered with paintings. Yes, they're everywhere. Paintings. Never in my wildest art school dreams did I suspect something like this would happen. <laughs> <laughs> Live by the paint, die by the paint. Live by the paint, die by the paint. <laughs> Andreas will cast shield okay. on himself. He will also do a seek. Okay. Uh, good luck, Andreas. 23. Ooh, very good, but not good enough. Ugh, I should have hero-pointed those. That was one off of the best I could possibly have rolled. You'll stride up to be beside the pedestal. All right, you walk up to the pedestal. You can see to the west there's another room. If you're interested in checking out that room, let me know. Well, can I see anything from where I'm at? Sure, let me tell you what you can see in that room... From where you're at. It's a tall room 
with a weird ceiling. It's riddled with hundreds of tiny holes. There are just lots of holes in the ceiling there. And you think you can see some light coming in through those holes. Yeah. We need to get out of here and come back at midnight. There's a ceiling with some holes in it. There might also be some paintings on the ceiling as well. And there's more paintings. We're doomed. We have to get out of here. <laughs> Jonesy, drag Corgo out. Oh, I'm way ahead of you, sir. <laughs> you are. Just waiting my turn. Corgo's turn. Corgo, you are unconscious. His sleep apnea kicks in. <laughs> he doesn't have his machine. <laughs> Zankath, the painting next to you comes to life and begins dancing around just like the one next to Corgo. This could be bad. And another paint cat, a cat made of paint, leaps out and chomps at you. Rude. It is rude. Ooh, I rolled oh, another Mike. 32. That's a critical. We're level two, Mike. I don't know. Sorry. You're about to <laughs> need to drag two people out of here. 30 points of damage. Ah. Uh, Zankath is unconscious. Zankath goes down. Sleepy, sleepy. And Jonesy, it is your turn. Corgo is lying on the ground here, drooling, snoring, bleeding. Not so badly bleeding now. How many actions is it to drag someone? Um, I don't know. The bulk of a medium creature is six. If you look at your character sheet, yep. would that put you over-encumbered? Um, Inventory. While, while you're looking at that, I have a question. Do you go to dying two if you take a critical hit Not get when you get knocked unconscious? Yes. Oh, yes, you do. Okay. Oh, no. Oh. Um, I, uh-huh. So I'm wounded too. I don't know. I got a max 10 and I'm currently at five. You said six? Yeah. So I'll drop something. So I have to drop something and then pick him up? Yeah, you're carrying, like, drop your backpack kind of thing. But I've got the Lunchables in there. <laughs> you got two sets. Of, you've also got an extra set of armor, which is two bulk. Okay, so. I'll just, he'll just drop the armor, then one action to pick up Corgo by the armpits, and then I can still move him. Yep. As normal, or am I hindered in my movement? I don't know what the rules are for dragging. So you're not over encumbered? No. Um, so you can. This is something that we tried to look up before. Dragging. In some situations you might drag an, an object or creature rather than carrying it. Treat its bulk as half. Typically you can drag one thing at a time. You must use both hands. You drag slowly, roughly, roughly 50 feet per minute, unless you have some means to speed it up. 50 feet per minute? Wow. Yeah. So five you're feet not, per round. But you're not over encumbered by it. So it sounds like, I feel like that's saying like this thing is so heavy that you have to drag it. Does that make sense? Yeah, I guess you could just say you lift him up. Yeah, if you're not encumbered, then I'll, I, I could just say you could lift him up or do the equivalent of quickly dragging him and move your normal speed. It's a flavor drag. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And basically, we just drag him just towards the steps and place him there, and then I would run back, but I don't have movement, so I will cower. Okay. And I'm going to say that Rangara is just going to follow, if that's okay with everyone. Makes sense. I'll allow it. <laughs> She's probably really upset. Andreas's turn. Before Zankath has to roll any death saves, I will do the same thing. I will step, grab Zankath. I have plenty of space in my uh, in my encumbrance, and I will also carry her. That's going to take. Oh no! You can do it. Uh, I can get to there with the first move, and there with the second move. So I get to just the opening of the cave with Zankath uh, clutched in my arms. Corgo is unconscious. Zankath, you need to make a flat check. Just a 20? D20. A uh, 12. Yeah, need to roll a 12 or higher. Oh, okay. So, no, I was asking if I needed to roll a 12. Yes. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, okay. It's like, I need to roll a D12? <laughs> <laughs> roll a D12. That's not oh, it. Oh, no. <laughs> That's oh, a no. 2. Yeah. Okay, dying you are three. now dying 3. All right, she's almost at the end here. It might happen, Mike. It might finally happen. All right, and you hear a voice shout, Flee! Get out! And that's it, as far as a creature going. Jonesy, it's your turn. Jonesy will stabilize Zankath, but he's got to move over here, I guess. 
to do it. And then he will stabilize her once he's close. And that's all my actions. Andreas, what do you want to do? Um, yeah, I'll keep carrying her away. We need to get out of here, recover, and just wait for midnight, I think. So if you're all just going to retreat and now everyone has been stabilized, then I'll just let you do that. Ooh. I'll just, I'm just going to drag you all into the next room. Or where do you want to move to? Yeah, uh, the next room if it's safe. Yeah, next room appears to be safe. Or somewhere warm in a, in a different country, perhaps. <laughs> kind of cool. <laughs> you retreat from the cavern and you collect your wits in this other room, the room where you found those new spells, and you decide how you're going to regroup and what you're going to do. Are you going to try again? Are you giving up? What, what, what are you going to do about this terrible force that you don't seem to be able to do anything against in the other room? I guess we'll find out in two weeks. Thanks for listening to Broken Tusk Rising. You can help the podcast by giving us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, or by following us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at The House of Bob. You can come chat with us on Discord, and most of all, you can support us on Patreon. That's patreon.com slash the house of Bob. This show is possible due to all of our patrons who we super appreciate and love. Those people get special zines, one shots, episode commentary, and other great stuff for supporting the podcast. This year, we're writing a mega dungeon one month at a time, one level at a time based on the tarot deck. You should come check it out. Give us a uh, $10 a month and it's all yours. Art for this episode is by Sean makes audio production and music are by Mike hammock. Thanks again for listening and roll on. What, what is your name? Where are you going? Just ignore that, sorry. <laughs> Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from? Come on, Joe. Now I gotta scroll back in my notes. <laughs> Backstory loading. Uh, yes. Uh, you encounter a loading screen. And that means we are moving into E8. This room is labeled E8. <laughs> <laughs> like you. Like in in world? No. That's just <laughs> me being silly. Sorry, I got distracted by the dog. Our dog? <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> so cute. Oh, that's adorable. Jeez. You should see <laughs> your face close up. Good dog. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> that's the best. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Continue, Mike. We're listening. All right. Uh wait yes that's correct yeah you uh, and who, who, who sorry I, I was distracted yes, I was distracted by this amazing picture I hope you all go to Discord and look at this amazing oh. pic- amazing picture that Jeanette posted <laughs> <laughs> she's got like just the perfect uh, goblin dog face that's delightful I love it. oh I just want to rub that dog okay. I'm sorry. So who said what to get a hero point? I did, I, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> Jess Don't worry just about solved it. the oh, adventure. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, go ahead and give yourself a hero point. And Jeanette, too, for the picture of the dog. Oh, what? goodness. I don't know if I want to set that precedent. <laughs> so you're going to get a lot, a lot of dog pictures. I've got cats. I could take pictures of my cats yeah. and send them. And I don't get anything if I post cool pictures of my cats. So It's true. Josh. Why are you wearing sunglasses? It's battle mode. Yeah, it's battle mode. I mean, <laughs> we just entered the danger zone. <laughs> <laughs> or he's about to play some late night Texas Hold'em. <laughs> I've been playing poker this whole time, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. You can see it in your glasses. Uh-huh. The <laughs> Pocket jacks. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> and I'll take off these glasses as a free... Action. <laughs> no, they're so cool in the moment. I'm in danger. <laughs> Not gonna put on a second pair of sunglasses. Hold on. <laughs> I hate the terrible force. Sucked. Yep. Paintings. That that was fine. So dangerous. <laughs> it was that was okay. <laughs>